Yeah, GPS 101. Okay, so to backtrack a little bit real quick to catch everyone up. So we have the Sagnac effect linearized. Now, the, the old way that they um, describe the effects of this, you know, the Sagnac effect is through mathematics, and they equate the effect due to uh, angular rotation. So the equation that they use is delta T equals 4 omega A divided by C squared. And what they do here is that your delta T is going to be your time interval, which produce, which is basically saying the fringe shift produced by this circular rotation is equal to four times the rotation of the device. Omega stands for uh, angular rotation. A stands for the area of the device, meaning that the length of the, the, the path, the length of that light has to travel within the device. So if you have a, you know, a classic Sagnac device like this or something, it's going to be this entire, length that light has to travel in the device that's going to be your area so and if in the, in the case of a uh what's it called a fiber optic gyro or something like that where you have a fiber optic cable it's going to be the length of that cable so if your cable is a thousand meters your area is a, th a thousand meters so what wang and this is how they so what was that 1913 Sag sagnac did his inter or yeah 1913 sagnac did his interferometry experiment and from there Everyone assumed that it was, you know, due to the angular rotation of the device, and that's the way they equated it because uh, Michelson Morley, they were saying, was a null result and that the speed of light was the same. So they were like stuck in that paradigm, right? They were in the middle of trying to do that to reify uh, Earth's orbital velocity and make make you know make that appear on the up and up. But then your boy Sagna came around came around with essentially the exact same experiment as a Michelson Morley experiment, but it's just a rotating device while it's running instead of rotating it and then um, taking a measurement and then rotating it again, stopping it, getting it fixed, and then taking a measurement and then changing it. So this is just constantly rotating what Sagnac did. So they so they wrapped it up in the paradigm of like, well, because it's a rotating device, it's a non-inertial frame, so it doesn't fall under the special relativistic paradigm where the speed of light has to be constant, blah, 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 right? So they came up with this like special case scenario for it. And then and then in uh, 1918, Paul Levine came along and made a special metric tensor to dis to describe um, the conservation of angular momentum on a smaller scale because Einstein's field equations are not able to uh, to account for that on the smaller scale, right? Unless you specifically have a metric for it, like your boy Paul Levine made up, and uh, not not even to get into the mathematical side of that, where the metric that he derived is a first order intrinsic invariant differential which is the equivalent of like a mathematic lo logical fallacy but to but to not even get into that just assume that's on the up and up the way that they try to explain it through general relativity in this metric is that they say that due to the rotation of the device that it's creating like little pockets of uh time dilation and length contraction um so that because the device is rotating they can't get enough contraction in one in one area like they can with nicholson morley because it's constantly changing. So that with this new metric, they're able to mathematically extrapolate that there's a continual effect due to the rotation, blah, blah, blah. There's length contraction within the device because it's rotating. So they've solidified the side neck effect as being due to angular rotation. So they, they save themselves the embarrassment of having to explain why Nicholson Morley is a null result and why a sag neck device is a, uh, produces a friendship pattern showing a varying speed of light, right? Now, so they went with this for years. This was like the last hundred years of physics. They've been going off of this uh, circular or uh, attributing the cyclic effect to angular rotation. So in 2004, Wang comes along and he does an experiment with a fiber optic gyro and conveyor belts and he linearizes the effect essentially, right? So he has a, instead of a, um, instead of a circular cyclic device he has just a straight line it's just a it's just straight and he has a conveyor belt and he has it going back and forth on the conveyor belt <clears throat> and he takes he takes his measurements and what do you know he finds that the sag neck effect is not dependent on angular rotation it's directionally dependent so when the propagation is going east to west or west to east that's where you're getting your variance and the math equation that he used to extrapolate the results so he's got this is from his equation here so the linearized version is delta T equals V2L over C squared. And if we, you know, if we remember back, so we got the friend shift prediction, friend shift prediction, two times, four times. And so this is times the rotational speed. And so velocity here. So rotational speed, velocity, same thing, uh, just different variations of how they're looking at it. 
And then the length here is equivalent to the area. So the length of the length of the device in the case of the fiber optic gyro he was using, it's just the length of the cord um, and then divided by C squared. Uh, and that accurately derives the, uh, the prediction for the Sagnac effect. And what he noticed too, was that when you apply the same equation to a uh, circular Sagnac device, it actually derives the same exact prediction and through GPS, what was found, um, let's see if he mentions it here. Let's see if I can get the quote correct. Yeah, right here. So we found that any segment of loop contributes to the total phase difference between the counter propagating light beams. The con the contribution is proportional to the product of the moving velocity in the projection of the segment length, uh, Delta L on the moving direction. So, um, back in the GPS presentation where I was, Here. There it is. Okay, yeah, so right here um, with GPS, you know, same situation with the Sagnac effect, preferred direction and all that. We have the stationary receiver at R1, or noted by R1, and we have a moving receiver noted by R2. Now, when the moving receivers um, intersects with the stationary receiver and a GPS signal is sent from either a stationary uh, ground station or a moving satellite or, you know, moving satellite in space, whatever is transmitting the signals in motion. doesn't matter. The, um, the distance between them at the time that the signal is sent is the same, but the stationary receiver gets the information first and the um, one in motion gets it at a slight delay. And the delay is exactly proportional to the velocity in which this guy is moving. So uh, what, mm -hmm. um, so, so so and that and that's huge isn't it that 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 actually last thing you said is huge right yeah that's a huge aspect of it because the first postulate of special relativity is that uh, i'm sorry the second postulate is that the speed of light is the same to observers regardless of their relative motion to the light source so moving in either direction shouldn't affect it so the fact that um I mean, the fact that wang linearized it in that regard is an absolute body bag because what should have happened was it shouldn't have produced a friendship pattern. If Mickelson Morley was truly a null result and there was an invariant speed of light, then his linearized sag neck effect experiment should have reflected that as well. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have got any variance. It should have been the same. There should be no fringe. So yeah, 2004, Ruyang Wang experimentally and mathematically destroyed special relativity. Then nobody batted an eyelash. Nobody gave him an award. Nobody did a huge media press conference saying that he was the new man or anything like that. Like, he didn't get a Nobel Prize. He doesn't have a bunch of research grants. He wasn't on TV, you know, or anything like that. No, like literally nobody cared. Is this the same guy that I've seen on YouTube from time to time? No. 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 Okay. No. No, I don't. I don't think. Hey, I, fellas. What's up? What's up? I gotta go. All right. Peace, hey, brother. You take care of yourself. You have you have a great Wednesday, my friend. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. No problem, man. Yeah, Al Alan's taking us to a different level that I don't know who's there. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, well, Peace, thank brother. You, sir. Take care. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's there, but I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, so that's the significance of that. Um, like in a nutshell, especially with the math and tying it all together with the interferometry. So does that kind of give you a jump start on it? Do you have any questions? Yes. Or no, oh, I'm going to look. I got I got five days before my quiz, right. so um, this is just something I thought about. Sometimes it's really good to work. I'm not saying we got to do this, and but sometimes.